Hey, it's me, Nalthazar, and welcome to another Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest video. In today's video, I want to go over Forsaken Monument, a mythic from Zendikar Rising, and how to build around it and play with it. So, let's get into it. Now, this was one of the cards that was in my chase list for Mythics and Masterpieces that actually panned out to be a card that I'm really enjoying playing with. Uh, it's actually one of the cards that I've enjoyed playing with the most from this set, just from a fun perspective. It's not a card that I'm going to be throwing into events and trying to get a perfect score with, but it's a card that I will absolutely throw into the training grounds and get a few giggles out, because the way that this works is very different from how you would be playing pretty much any other match in Puzzle Quest. Forsaken Monument is one of those rare cards that has a lot of abilities, where you actually want all of the abilities on the card. It is a support, it's 15 mana, it's legendary, it's an artifact, it's got four shields, and while on the board, your colorless creatures get a plus five, plus five buff. When you match three or more loyalty gems, gain three mana, and when you cast a colorless card, gain six life. Now, this is really nice because the cards that you'd want to use in conjunction with this are, like the creatures would be ideally colorless because the creatures that pair really well with this card's other abilities are colorless. And then there is also going to get you to gain life because for the second ability, when you match loyalty gems and you gain mana, you can throw a whole bunch of loyalty gem converters in your deck and those cards generally tend to be colorless. And when I say generally tend to be, I mean they're all colorless. And so, uh, as well, except for one. Uh, so as a result of that, you're gonna make it so that when you're playing all those other cards, you're gonna be gaining life. And so you're going to be able to get your creatures to be buffed up from this. You're actually going to gain quite a bit of mana. And then you're also going to be gaining a lot of life. Now, if you've gotten this card and you've just sort of thrown it to the side and been like, you know what, this this is kind of trash. Uh, I'm, going, I'm making this video so that I can show you how to build around this card. And then I'm going to show you guys some gameplay with it. Now, my favorite way to play with this and build with this is actually to pair it with Palladium Myrrh. Palladium Myrrh is going to have a very similar ability to Forsaken Monument, and that it's also going to have when you match three or more loyalty gems, gain three mana. If you're wondering, Nalvazar, why isn't it appearing on the screen right now? Uh, I'm going to be showing it to you in just a second. And so I like to pair it with that, and then I like to pair these two with a Planeswalker, whose loyalty abilities are abilities that I really want to be using. So for today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to be building an event deck for the training grounds around Sarkhan Unbroken. Now, you don't need to be using Sarkhan Unbroken. It can really be any Planeswalker that you like the loyalty abilities of. But I particularly like the way that Sarkhan Unbroken's third loyalty ability is going to work as a kill condition against our opponents. Another one of my favorite Planeswalkers to run this with is actually Kiora, because with Kiora, if you've got her at level 60, that's going to put out pretty much every turn a 32-32 Defender Trample Reach Octopus token, which is quite strong. But I'm going to go for a uh, Brokon because it's going to fetch us three big creatures. Now, for the first card in your deck, right, that if you're building around Forsaken Monument, you're going to want to go ahead and throw the monument in itself. Now, I mentioned Palladium Myrrh a moment ago, uh, and that's actually going to be the second card that you're going to want to add to your deck. And so you want to add Palladium Myrrh to the deck because it has that when you match three or more loyalty gems, you gain three mana. Meaning that if you've got both the Palladium Myrrh and the Forsaken Monument on the board, you're going to be gaining six mana for every loyalty gem match. And then on top of that, the Forsaken Monument is also going to buff up the Palladium Myrrh to become an 8-8. Eight, eight. Not the base power toughness, but, you know, the one copy would become an 8-8. Eight, eight. The second copy would make it an 11-11. And then it's also going to make it so you're still going to be gaining life from the third part of the Forsaken Monument. Right, so if you're able to pair these two together, that's going to make your deck a lot better, and it's going to make this a lot more fun. Now, once you add these two to your deck, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to search for your loyalty gem converters, right? So you can just type in convert loyalty. So convert loyalty. Uh, and then when you type that in, that's going to pull up uh, all the different cards that are in your collection that are going to be able to convert to loyalty. I have a few favorites here, and so I like to use my own personal favorites, but you can definitely deviate from this a little bit just based on what you have. 
Now, my favorites to use are Hall of Heliod's Generosity, because this is the only one of our loyalty converters that converts three gems to loyalty. I don't use it for the bottom half, I only use it for the top half. Labyrinth of Skophos, because this one's got an additional ability to add a little bit of control to our deck, which is really nice, just by making it so that one of your opponent's creatures is probably not going to be able to attack. I like Bonder's Enclave, because with our big creature, it's going to make it so that we're going to be drawing an extra card every turn on top of our loyalty gem conversion. And then for the last one, I personally like Fabled Passage, because this winds up getting destroyed a lot, and when it's not getting destroyed, it's converting more gems, and when it is getting destroyed, it's more likely to fetch one of the other converters that are better than this. So either the Labyrinth, or the Hall, or the Bonder's Enclave. Now, there's another way that you can run the deck. Uh, you could use Crystalline Giant. There's a way that you can do it around that and Nesting Grounds so that you're able to get a whole bunch of uh, evergreens and then spread them out across your creatures. And you'll see a little bit of that when we're looking through our different creature options. But my own personal favorite way to go is to use the Hall of Heliod's Generosity, Labyrinth of Skull, Skophos, Bonder's Enclave, and Fabled Passage. Now, I would suggest running four total supports that are going to convert gems to loyalty if you can. Uh, so if you're running this, try and throw in four into your deck. If that means that you need to use something like Crawling Barons, go ahead and throw it in. It's a solid card. It's going to buff your creatures on top of giving you the loyalty conversion. Animal Sanctuary really isn't going to do anything for you, so I would actually avoid this one apart from, you know, converting gems to loyalty. Radiant Fountain can be kind of cool just in that it's going to give you an additional three life. So when you play it, you gain nine life in conjunction with the Forsaken Monument, but otherwise it's just going to convert gems to loyalty. Nesting Grounds, I've gone over. It's pretty cool. Uh, tournament Grounds, you're probably really not going to get very much use out of. And that brings us to, wait a minute, there's a creature here. Excuse me, what is this creature? Solemn Simulacrum, you say? Well, Solemn Simulacrum is another really fun card to add to a deck around Forsaken Monument. If you can add it, that's great. Uh, if you can't, then, you know, it's not the end of the world. But when this creature enters the battlefield, you're going to convert four gems to loyalty gems. So this is going to give you just a little bit of additional gem conversion. It's going to be a 9-9 with Defender with the Forsaken Monument out. Uh, and then when it dies, you're going to draw a card and gain mana equal to the amount of loyalty that you have. And so given that you're going to very often be like at or close to 30 loyalty with this deck, that means that you basically just draw a card and get full mana into that card. So this gets us to 7 out of our 10 cards, right? Uh, ideally, you're able to run 4 of your loyalty converters. Ideally, you have Palladium Myrrh. Uh, and if you don't have Solemn Simulacrum, you can throw something else in, although I personally really like the Simulacrum. And so for this next one, let's go ahead and figure out what our last creature is. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to select Colorless Creatures, uh, and we're just going to go ahead and take a look at what our Colorless Creature options are. There really aren't too many in Standard right now, uh, but my own suggestions for like what are the best things that you can throw in... My personal favorite is Myriad Construct. This is what I'm going to be fetching with Brocon's third ability. I like this because the entire deck is pretty much predicated on getting a whole bunch of lands out that are going to be converting gems to loyalty. And so we're going to be able to kick this and make it quite swole. In general, I feel like I get this thing to like 70 power toughness every single game, which is pretty sweet. You're definitely going to win games if you're getting a 70-70 down on the battlefield. Uh, and so that's going to make it so that the games go by fairly quickly. Like I mentioned earlier, you can run, you can go the Crystalline Giant route, where you have this thing buffing up every turn, and then getting evergreens that are going to be passed on with Nesting Grounds as another loyalty converter. That way is pretty cool, and if you're going to do that, then you're probably going to want to be running it in Kiora or some other deck, but not Brocon, because then you don't have a target for Brocon's third ability. Uh, but nonetheless, it's still a perfectly viable option. And then my last favorite potential option is actually going to be Stone Coil Serpent. Because Stone Coil Serpent is going to be a 6-6 with Reach. And with the Forsaken Monument out, it's actually going to become an 11-11 with Reach. And then it can also gain protection from colors. So this gives you a really nice defense in the face of whatever it is that your opponent might play. Now, my own personal three favorites are going to be the Simulacrum, the Construct, and the Palladium Mer. But if you choose to go a different route, that's okay. For the last two cards in our deck, what we want are going to be some card draw, right? We want we want some stuff that draws cards, yeah? So you're going to want some kind of like big deal card draw in your deck. My very favorite here is Escape to the Wilds. It's part of why I think that green or red are such good options for this. Because you draw five cards and then you give all the land supports in your hand full mana. 
And so with this deck, I'm running four lands, and so it's very likely that I'm going to draw lands, or maybe I already have lands in my hand, and then I play Escape to the Wilds just to give all of them full mana. So I really like running Escape to the Wilds in this deck. Another very good option is something like Days Undoing, which is going to draw five and give you mana. Unfortunately, there is a bug with Days Undoing at the time of my making this video, where if it's got its mana charged up and you choose not now, it's still going to go ahead uh, and do like a pseudo portion of its ability. You just draw cards, you draw five cards, uh, but I still think it's worth using. Seagate Restoration is another good option. Oh, my computer says your battery is going to run out. But as I was saying, Seagate Restoration is another solid option. It does give you a land token, which I don't actually like. Uh, Nissa's Revelation is another good one. This is going to give you more life gain, although you really, let's face it, don't need life gain. Uh, and then my other favorite here is actually going to be Nahiri's Lithoforming, because Nahiri's Lithoforming is going to destroy a bunch of gems that are going to be in uh, not your Planeswalker's colors. Uh, so just in like whatever your Planeswalker's colors aren't. And that means that it's not going to be destroying, uh, at least from my experience, it, it, it actually winds up not destroying uh, the loyalty gems. And so you wind up getting a whole bunch of cascades from this with loyalty gems. And if you've got Palladium Mur and Forsaken Monument down, then you just get so much mana out of it. You actually wind up getting more mana uh, with those two in Nahiri's Litho forming than you do with Koth. So it's another fantastic option that you can throw into the deck. Although my own personal favorite, like I said, is going to be Escape to the Wilds. And then for the final card, you're going to want to add something that gives you some semblance of control, right? Because let's face it, just having our defenders and our, our little where is it? Labyrinth of Scophos isn't going to be enough. Now, my own personal favorite to add here is not like, th this is part of why I wouldn't run it in like a super serious event, is going to be Thassa Deep Dwelling. I like Thassa Deep Dwelling here because it's going to give me additional creature disable for my opponent. And then not only is it going to do that, but it's going to enable me to flicker the Solemn Simulacrum in and out of the battlefield, which is going to let me convert an additional four gems to loyalty every single turn. And so, and converting additional gems to loyalty every turn, it just sort of gives me a definite, definite way of getting to that 30 loyalty, or at the very least for Brocon 21, to get that Sangrite Overlords every single turn so that I can go ahead and get the Myriad Construct down. So I'm going to go ahead, take this deck, throw it into the training grounds. I'm going to, I'm going to play a bunch of matches with it. I'll let you guys watch through the different matches that I play. Uh, thank you guys so much for all of your support, by the way. I've, I've been really appreciating it lately, especially all of you guys in, in Discord who've been sending me all the messages. Thank you. Um, so let's go ahead and get into the gameplay. So match number one here uh, is going to be up against a Nissa of Shadowed Bows. Uh, it's actually a pretty advantageous starting match right there, trying to get uh, all of my gem converters down. So that's definitely one of our major goals here. We want to get our gem converters down. And so having Labyrinth of Scophos here, and then having both Palladium Mirror and having um, the Forsaken Monument here is 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 great, because those are ultimately the things that we want. Now, seeing the Nissa of Shadowed Bows play the Titan there tells me that uh, this Nissa of Shadowed Bows deck that I'm up against is one of those infinite combo Titan builds. So... I'm not super worried about that. I'm already at my third ability, which is kind of scary, but that's one of the things that you can generally expect with this deck. Uh, I did, in between, actually wind up swapping Throne of McKindy in. Um, so I, I am running Throne of McKindy for this gameplay. Uh, and then I just wanted to try it out with the, um, with the Golem. So the Myriad Construct. You'll wind up seeing uh, in between matches that I've, I've played like 12 Training Grounds games or something in between. Like I played, I played it. I've been playing a lot, a lot, a lot of this. Now, if you're wondering why I kicked it twice there, I kicked it so that I'd get the buffs. Uh, I've already got that third one in my hand. So I'm not even remotely worried about getting that buff at some point in time. Uh, and then just with all of the loyalty conversion that I have, I'm not really worried about my mana either. So... Uh, I've got Thassa in my hand, unfortunately no Simulacrum, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to play the Construct, I am going to go ahead and kick it. Uh, I've got the McKindy down, so it's going to convert some gems for me. And then I think that next turn, just I'm, I'm, I'm very likely to get my third again, just from Loyalty Gem Conversion. So, yep, there it is. And then, yeah, okay, so we've got our, we've got our third, we've got a Simulacrum, but that's really no big deal. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get three more Myriad Constructs, and then that's going to be the ballgame. So 
this this deck is is really consistent. I'm showing you guys three straight games here, I think. And uh, in those three games, you'll see that this deck just winds up completely and totally wiping the opponent's face. So I'm going to kick once and twice. Uh, and then, yeah, that brings our construct to 70 power. And that's the end of Nissa. So yeah, I mean, 70 power seems to be the general benchmark for me with the construct, with the myriad construct. But I mean, it can go, it can go anywhere like up one or down one reinforcement but 70 seems to be the range that i'm getting so uh yeah yeah so you see so 12 12 matches i've been i've been playing a lot of different decks also to uh to make more videos for you guys so i've actually got a number of videos recorded that i just need to uh do the audio for now here i've got evolving wilds in my starting hand i've got two lands and so uh, when you have a situation like this you want to prioritize playing the evolving wilds because when you play the evolving wilds it's going to charge up the lands. So uh, Rawl winds up getting a super lucky turn here, plays a Chandra Vanguard, which is kind of annoying, but isn't like the end of the world or anything like that. Uh, I'm gonna move the Simulacrum up in my hand because remember, we're gonna get all of our mana loaded into our lands in our hand. So there's really no reason to, to do anything else with them. Uh, I've got another Escape to the Wilds. Uh, it's tempting to toss it, but I really don't need to. It'll, it'll be nice to have the additional card draw, and I've got that green-blue match right there, which is uh, actually super sweet. Uh, so that's that's going to give us three lands, although two of them are just uh, labyrinths. So it's kind of like two different lands. Um, Rawl, that was a terrible play. I, I don't know. Greg, sometimes I'm like, well, what are you doing, Greg? But I do have Palladium Mirror, and I have the Forsaken Monument here. Uh, which is absolutely what I want. I want to be able to get both of those down as quickly as possible. I've got a pretty decent green match on the bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and take that. Uh, hope for the landfalls, risk it for the biscuit, get the biscuit, get the palladium mirror, and get my third ability. So, uh, okay, that's really not scary at all. The only unfortunate thing is that that thing's just going to get flickered uh, in and out of the battlefield, and since it has haste, the Labyrinth of Scophos isn't going to actually do anything to stop it from being a pain in the butt, so... That's, that's really all that we have to worry about there. Uh, I could go ahead and ding a shield from uh, the, the Chandra Vanguard, but that's really not going to do anything like substantial for me since that thing's already at nine shields. Uh, I've got the constructs. I do want to get the Forsaken Monument down here. I definitely want to get that down, so I'm, I'm going to try and risk it again. I uh, sadly don't. I don't get the Biscuit this time. Uh, here you'll see that I'm, I'm debating the kicker, but I do want to get the Forsaken Monument down, so... Uh, this is just ultimately me choosing to prioritize getting the monument over uh, kicking the construct. Just the monument is going to be worth more at this stage than than the construct. Uh, Rawl does pop the Chandra there, but that's really not a big deal. We're pretty close to our, our killing point here, anyways. Uh, so I'm just going to leave. I'm going to leave what I've got going there, and then. For my match, this should give me a bonus green match, which should be a bunch of mana. And then on top of that, that means that we get our monument down. Uh, we're going to be able to escape to the wilds again, uh, which is going to get us uh, Fabled Passage, which is nice. And then with a relatively decent gem conversion next time, uh, we should have our third ability again uh, and get three more constructs. So, yep, there's our third again. Uh, and then we've got a five match on the bottom, which is pretty sweet. So uh, this stage, I'm just going to want to go ahead and uh, toss three cards from my hand uh, so I can use my third ability, get three more constructs. Uh, I know that I've already won the game. So, I mean, it's not like, you know, I like, oh no, what am I going to do? Uh, but I am going to absolutely kick that construct. And uh, now I can go ahead and get rid of three. So I'm going to get rid of Heliods, the monument, uh, and then pop the third. And then uh, I've actually, uh, I've actually got the myrrh with mana so i'm moving things around in my hand so that ideally i can kick all of the constructs and make them as big as possible i don't know i've just sort of got this thing where i like to to make my critters as big as possible now uh, in the event that you're wondering nalthazar why are you throwing showing us three matches right um you, you've got three different matches that you're showing us uh so I'm, I'm showing you guys the three matches just to show you how incredibly consistent the deck is like the deck looks like it should be gimmicky and not really work consistently but it actually does like i i still i think i've lost one match with this deck over all the time that i've been playing it i started playing it day one of uh, zendikar rising coming out because i got 
the Forsaken Monument in my day one pulls. Um, so I wound up, I wound up playing maybe like 40 matches with it. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's very consistent. Very, very, very consistent. Uh, so here we've got three lands. Uh, that's that's great. We we definitely want to have three lands. It it's uh, we've got a five match though, so I don't want the lands to come out. I don't mind the fabled passage coming out though, just because if that thing pops, then I get I get something else. Um, and so here I've got a fairly advantageous match that's going to get me McKindy and the Hall of Heliods here, and then uh, it's going to get me a bunch of loyalty conversion. I've got the Simulacrum, uh, which is pretty sweet. I definitely want to try and get the Simulacrum down this game. If I could get Simulacrum and Thassa this game, that would actually be pretty sweet. Uh, so you guys can see how those two look in conjunction with this deck. Uh, since in games one and two, it was just like complete beatdown with our third ability. So, uh, all right. So here, let's see, what would be what would be the best match? Uh, there's actually a lot of really decent match opportunities. There's that landfall of blue, but there's this white match that's going to get me a whole bunch of loyalty, and I like that. So Simulacrum comes down, we've got our third ability, um, just sort of like the same general theme of the deck, like you've, it, it just feels like you've always got your third ability, like you just, you just get so much loyalty, it's kind of unfair. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to pop the third, that's going to get us our constructs, uh, and then I'm actually going to maneuver the constructs around. I'm putting that one first so that I can kick it, make the mana go out of the McKindy, and then I can kick all of the other constructs in my hand. So Scophos comes down, I can go ahead and kick that one. Um, and so I've now got the three constructs down. And the three, four double striker, it, it's welcome to buff itself as much as it wants. The labyrinth is going to uh, exile it. So it's, it's gonna lose its buff. Uh, it's not gonna be able to do anything really. So uh, we're getting more of our loyalty matches because we have way more than anyone has any right to have. Uh, getting the Forsaken Monument there is pretty great, uh, and then actually it's actually not a bad, it's not a bad match possibility right there. No, okay. So uh, the monument is is going to be next up in our hand. Uh, the yeah, once again, I mean that thing can buff itself. Like Labyrinth of Scophos is is just such a good card. Uh, it's it's really really good, especially now that it isn't bugged anymore. Uh, you might be like, wait a minute, Nalthazar, this card was bugged? Uh, but yeah, it was. It was bugged. It's just not bugged anymore. Um, and so, no, no Thassa this time, guys. It looks like we're not getting Thassa. We're just going to go ahead and do a good old-fashioned beatdown. And that's it. So, uh, if you've got the cards to make this deck, I would definitely recommend that you guys try it out. Uh, it's 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 a really good deck. Like, it's really fun. You don't need to be running the Throne of McKindy like I am here. Uh, you could run the original version that I built with you guys and it, it'll be the same, but you'll see that the, the construct gets to like 70 every time. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next one.